Hey everybody, Dr. Ward here with a real quick anatomical tutorial on what makes a shoulder separation a specific entity and different from a shoulder dislocation. Now a shoulder dislocation occurs when the head of the humerus leaves the glenoid cavity of the scapula a little bit like this. Now a shoulder separation happens when the scapula out here distracts away from the distal clavicle and that happens as we get damage to the acromioclavicular joint right here and rupture of the associated ligaments as well as rupture of the ligaments connecting the coracoid process of the scapula, this little thumb-shaped structure right here with the distal clavicle. To make sense of how that works we're going to look at this little model right here. It's not perfect but it's a little bit useful. What we have here, turn around, is a little idealized scapula. Here's the back of it with the scapular spine coming up to the acromial process, articulating with clavicle right here. On the front, we've got this little strut sticking out that is representing the coracoid process. So when we've got an injury to the distal shoulder, largely happens because somebody's diving for the ground and their shoulder hits and pushes the acromion down and away from the clavicle, you start with a type one where you have damage but not outright rupture of the acromioclavicular joint. If the pressure exceeds that threshold or continues, you can move on to a type two where the acromioclavicular joint is completely compromised and the two separate from each other, like so. However, the scapula doesn't distract down or inferiorly too easily because we still have a fairly substantial connection between the coracoid process and the clavicle right here. But if the force continues pressing inferiorly on the acromion, those ligaments as well can rupture and then you have a full-fledged shoulder separation. So type one is trauma two, the acromioclavicular joint without distraction. Type 2, acromioclavicular joint ruptures utterly. And type 3, acromioclavicular joint and coracoclavicular ligaments all get torn. Let's take a little close up of that right here at the shoulder and check that out. So right here I've got the acromion, the distal clavicle, right here, and the head of the humerus. The head of the humerus and the rest of the upper limb aren't as important for this whole process other than they're heavy. So if I really hit this guy hard on the acromion or he's taking a dive at the ground, a type 1 shoulder separation is where we have tearing of these fibers of the acromioclavicular ligament, but not actual distraction. Type 1 can easily progress to a type 2, where I've detached this little Velcro joint now, and the distal clavicle and the acromion are no longer in direct contact. Continued pressure inferiorly will start to damage the corico clavicular ligaments. And if you're very particular, there's two complexes in there, the conoid ligament and the trapezoid ligament. Now that happens, we'll start detaching our coracoclavicular ligaments right here. The weight of the upper limb pulls the shoulder, and I should say the scapula, inferiorly, and it drops. Now at this point, it's detached pretty well. What you're going to notice on people who suffer from this in, acutely is that they're going to have this big lump sticking out the side of their neck. That's actually the distal clavicle. It doesn't have anything attached to it, and that's going to be the one major sign that you've got a complete type 3 shoulder separation. All right, hope you guys found this helpful, and keep studying. And put his shoulder back in place just because we're nice people like that. Have a good one.